I want to let you into a secret truth about goal setting. I hate goal setting. Um, I haven't really done goal setting for 11 years in my business. There's a number of reasons why I hate goal setting. Um, and for those that don't know me or Build It Brilliant so well, I am really passionate about talking to you about the, real, the reality of, of creating, setting up a brilliant business. Um, I think so many people and so many companies kind of sell you a bit of a dream and you get bought into that. And there's lots of things in terms of the reality of this journey that you wish that you were told and you wish that people would have said. So in this video, I'm going to show a little bit of vulnerability and some honesty and kind of tell you my experience with goal setting. Why? Um, well, as a coach, I understand the benefits of goal setting, but I've never been able to do it and hated it for years. So, <laughs> um, so I kind of want to de debunk it and share my experiences with it so that it can help you in terms of what you're going to do in terms of of setting those things for yourself and your business so why do I hate goal setting as a child I never knew what I wanted to be when I grow up so the minute somebody said Zoe what do you want to be when you grow up was the minute that I kind of froze because I don't know I've never known I've never been a person that has a oh I want to be this and that's sort of uh, a vocation if you like ever so the minute that somebody, I set a goal or a goal is set is the minute that I really want to make that happen, but I feel the pressure and the stress that comes with that particular goal. And I feel like it takes away my motivation and my energy and my passion for whatever it is that I'm working on. That's reason number one. Reason number two is that I really enjoy variety and difference and find that quite motivating. And I feel that goal setting says, right, this is the thing that you need to achieve. So in which case, kind of what about all the other exciting things and lovely things that I want to do? Does it mean that because I'm so steadfast on achieving that particular thing that then um, I don't or can't take the advantage of the moment and living in flow and enjoying the things that come my way. So those are two big reasons why I don't like goal setting. Um, however, I do think that that has had a downside. And the downside to that is I take on too much and not able to say no to things because I'm like a magpie and I get excited by all sorts of projects and all sorts of things. So over the last 10 years, I think that that has affected the, the success of my business just because I've been doing too many things, spreading myself too thin. And I also think as well that if you have a target or something that you're aiming for, then all of that energy and effort goes into that particular thing. So I think there's a, a sort of a reduced outcome or output um, when you're sort of splitting yourself between, between these different things. So over the last year, I've done quite a lot of work personally on my perception of goal setting because I, I really want to achieve certain things in my life and I'm not going to achieve them with the mindset of not setting goals. So what have I done? The first thing that I realized is the word goal setting conjures up within me so many images and stories that I just don't like it. So I completely changed my wording. I think what would you like to achieve for me comes from a place of motivation and excitement. And that is where I want to be in terms of my business and in terms of going forwards. I want to be motivated and excited about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So what would you like to achieve? really fits with that for me the next one is aim I've changed it to having an aim rather than a goal again just changing the wording so I invite you to kind of think about your relationship with goal setting and maybe just like me there's some changes in the words that can be really empowering to help you to see that process differently than you did before the next thing that I've done is challenge my perception about kind of not being able to do other stuff just because you've set that goal and saying, okay, but um, 
by having that achievement, by having those things, that aim and that achievement allows you to say, what is my choice in terms of the decisions that I've got to make? It's not a, you can't do this, this and this. It's more of a, what would what would the right, the choice be for you? And, and so kind of changing the mindset of saying, just because I have an achievement and an aim doesn't mean that I don't have choice. And I kind of separated those two things out and, and had it in my head as an either or kind of thing and realizing it's not an either or, it's to say, this is the aim. These are the things that you really want to achieve. So you still have choice over whether you take those opportunities or, or not. And it kind of enhances your ability to make an educated decision rather than taking away choice. The next thing is um, kind of getting over myself <laughs> and put it down on paper. So uh, a lot of the times the kind of achievements and the aims that I wanted were rattling around in my head, things that would be really nice to do, um, but not necessarily things that were on a piece of paper. So the, the jigsaw has to work when it comes to goal setting and, and achievements and aims. So if I aim to, to achieve a certain thing, then... I have to say on a piece of paper, that is the thing that I want to achieve and that's the thing I want to aim for because then all the steps before it start to become clearer. Um, there's a huge piece in there about permission. It took me a while to give myself permission to say, this is what I want and this is what I want to achieve. That for me was quite a big step. I've always been um, a people pleaser kind of personality. I've always done things for other people. And finally saying, what do I want? And what is it that I want to achieve has taken me quite a while to answer honestly. And there's something about timing for me. I, I can't really say where I'm gonna be in five years. That to me is too big, it's too long. There's too many variants in it. It just doesn't work for me. So I've reduced the time scale and said, OK, what do I want to have achieved and what do I want to aim for over the next year? And in which case, what kind of has to happen in the next three months in order to get the outcome in a year's time? And those sorts of time frames I can manage. They feel smaller. They feel achievable for me. So I hope that little insight has, has helped you have some reflection on this idea of goal setting and what it means to you. Two little nuggets from me. Number one, I think it has to start with motivation and excitement for you. And that is gonna be different for different people. So the motivation and the excitement going forwards needs to be there in order to say, these are the things that I want to aim for, or these are the things that I want to achieve. It's coming from the right place then. Um, and I think just play with it in your own, give yourself permission to create that idea in your own way that fits your personality and your way of being so if you need to change the words then change them if you need to change the time scales then change them um, make it work for you and give yourself permission to make it work for you so that's it for this ama uh, i will leave it there i hope you, you have found that helpful and i will see you next time for the next ama